It's one o'clock. We'll start in one minute. Bob, did you get caught? Did you? Uh, Sorry. Bob, did you get confirmation from uh, Alderman Irving or do you need me to send him a text? Uh, I was told by the staff member. So if you want to send him a text just to remind him, that would be great. Okay. Oh, uh, he confirmed, but a reminder text is fine, Commissioner. Bob, you can see Wait, the screen? Can... Yes, I can see the okay. screen. And I'm first, right? So I'll make it bigger. Yep. Very good. Okay, are we ready to begin? We've got another 20 seconds. <laughs> we officially... Looks like we're good to go. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to, to the December 14th regular meeting of the Community Development Commission of Chicago. I am Gwendolyn Hatton Butler, chair of the CDC and the host of today's virtual meeting. On November 12th, Governor Pritzker renewed his executive order proclaiming that all counties in the state of Illinois are in a disaster area. Section seven of the Illinois Open Meetings Act allows the CDC, along with other city boards and commissions, to host virtual meetings during this COVID-19 public health emergency, provided that certain conditions are met. One of those conditions is that the chair of this commission determines that an in-person meeting on the scheduled meeting date would not be practical or prudent. To ensure that today's virtual meeting meets all conditions of the Open Meetings Act, I am hereby making the determination pursuant to section 7E2 of the act that due to the COVID-19 public health emergency, an in-person meeting would not have been practical or prudent today. Therefore, in accordance with the commission's emergency rules, this meeting is being held virtually on Zoom and can be viewed live via the commission's website. A court reporter is present today to record the proceedings. Commissioners, you have all been designated as panelists, which means that you will be able to control your microphone. Please remember to place your microphone on mute unless you need to speak. If you want to be recognized by the chair, please activate the raise your hand feature and you will be called in order. The agenda for today's meeting was posted on December 8th, both online at the CDC's website and physically in City Hall. I will now begin the meeting with the call of the roll. Commissioners, when your name is called, please turn your microphone on, respond by saying present, and please also indicate that you can hear me. Vice Chair Newsom. Secretary Wheat. Present and I can hear you. Commissioner Brooks. Present and I can hear you. Commissioner Buford. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Present and I can hear you. Commissioner Cox. Uh, present, I can hear you. Commissioner Curtis. Present, and I can hear you. Commissioner Davis. Present, and I can hear you. Commissioner Gomez. Present, I can hear you. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Rhodes. I'm here, and I can hear you. Commissioner Thomas. Present, and I can hear you. Commissioner Trevino. and Chairwoman Butler is present, we have a quorum. The first item on our agenda requests approval of the minutes from our previous meeting held on November 9th. The commissioners have had an opportunity to review the minutes and if there are no corrections, I am looking for a motion to approve. Do I have a motion? So move, Commissioner Brooks. So moved by Commissioner Brooks. Do I have a second? Second, Commissioner Chan McKibben. Seconded by Commissioner Chan McKibben. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are, do, are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. If you are not present at the November 9th meeting, please indicate that you abstain on this motion when your name is called. 
Vice Chair Newsom. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Uh, yes. Commissioner Curtis. Abstain. Commissioner Davis. Abstain. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Rhodes. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. The public was given an opportunity to provide written comments up to 24 hours prior to the start of this meeting through the CDC email address, which is cdc at cityofchicago.org. There were no written comments in the CDC mailbox for today's meeting. The CDC's emergency rules required that any member of the public wishing to comment on an agenda item could do so by registering in advance at the CDC's mailbox up to 24 hours before the start of today's meeting. No members of the public signed up to speak at today's meeting. Therefore, for our first item of new business, the Department of Housing is requesting authority to negotiate and enter into a TIF redevelopment agreement with developer BJ Wright Preservation LP for the redevelopment of property located at 1354 South Morgan Street. The subject property is located within the Roosevelt Racine TIF redevelopment project area. Dino Wayne will present the staff report on behalf of the Department of Housing. Dino, when you, you may begin your presentation when you're ready. Uh, Dina was having some technical oh. problems before. Let's see. And I, I apologize for mispronouncing her last name. I mean, her first name. Dina, are you there? Kamal? I believe we lost her. Uh, I think she was having some issues with her computer. Okay, so um, tech support, can you let me know when she comes back on? And we will um, move to the second item of new business if Mike Perello is on. Mike, are you on? I am, can you hear me? I can, so uh, we'll come back to Dinah um, for the first item of new business. So we're going to commissioners um, and for everyone else, um, on this call, we're going to move to this item B, as in boy, on the agenda, which is uh, for our second item of new business, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to acquire a 6.3 vacant site located at 1600 to 1800 South Pretoria Street in the Pilsen Industrial Corridor tip. The site includes 28 separate but contiguous parcels and is currently owned by PMG Investment LLC, which has agreed to sell the property to the city. Michael Corella will present the staff report on behalf of the planning department. Mike, you may begin your presentation when ready. All right, I am attempting to share my screen. It says it's paused. Can you see it now? Yes. Great. All right. Good afternoon, Chairman and members of the Commission. For the record, my name is Michael Perella, Project Manager with the Department of Planning and Development. The resolution before you requests authorization for the city to acquire acquisition authority for the property located roughly at 1600 to 1800 South Peoria so that the city can purchase those properties from PMG Investments LLC as part of a larger commitment to deliver affordable housing to the Pilsen neighborhood. The proposed land is located in the Lower West Side community area, uh, Pilsen neighborhood, in the Pilsen Industrial TIF 
and the 25th Ward led by Alderman Cicho Lopez. The site consists of 26 pins comprising roughly 6.3 acres, roughly bound by 16th Street to the north, Newberry Ave to the east, 18th Street to the south, and Sangamon Street to the west. Um, here is the site in question. Uh, and these properties represent the last and certainly the largest, uh, or one of the last and certainly the largest uh, vacant parcels in the Pilsen neighborhood, which is a, a dense, diverse, and culturally rich area. Uh, the neighborhood has, been, has, as of late, been undergoing uh, significant development pressure that have upset the socioeconomic balance of the rich Mexican heritage of the community. Uh, this gentrification has raised the cost of housing and forced many long-term residents from their homes. The site uh, is the location of a pro proposed but never built 500 unit market rate apartment complex. In 2015, the current owner PMG Investments LLC proposed the market rate apartment complex on the site but failed to win community and aldermanic support. As a result, PMG abandoned plans for the project. In an effort to combat gentrification and support affordable housing, the city began negotiations with PMG Investments to acquire the 6.3 acre site. In October of this year, 2021, PMG and the city reached an agreement for the city to purchase the properties for $12 million. <clears throat> the city is using previously approved TIF and DOH funds to complete this $12 million purchase. Acquiring Acquisition Authority now will grant the city authority to purchase the property and will allow the city to close on the agreed upon purchase and sale agreement and turn this property over to the city so that it can be redeveloped. Once acquired, the city, led by the Department of Housing and Development, the Department of Planning and Development, sorry, Department of Housing, uh, and in support of the Department of Planning and Development, will embark on a multi-year project to first remediate and redevelop the property. The site is former home of the National Lead Paint and will need extensive remediation to clean the contaminated soil and ensure that it is safe for residential uses. Additional environmental testing is needed to determine the scope of the work, but cleanup is expected to run through 2022. No specific plans have been developed for the site to date. The city plans to engage in a robust community planning process to develop a plan for the land with the goal of developing at least 280 units on site. It is expected that the project will proceed in phases depending on available financing and public approvals. Oh boy, <laughs> groundbreaking could occur as early as 2023. Pardon me. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so as I said, um, Potentially as early as 2023, provided that the public approvals and um, financing are aligned, you could see maybe a start of the first phase of the project. So uh, in conclusion, uh, approving acquisition authority now will allow the city to purchase and remediate a vacant and environmentally contaminated property with the goal of delivering hundreds of new affordable housing units and over $100 million in development activity to the site. The project is in conformance with the Pilsen Industrial TIF redevelopment plan and Alderman Cicho Lopez is in full support. Therefore, the Department of Planning and Development uh, recommends the Community Development Commission uh, recommend approval of acquisition authority for the uh, land uh, roughly 1600 to 1800 South Peoria Ave. Uh, that concludes my presentation. And I'll, I'll take any questions you may have. Thank you, Michael. And before uh, we ask the commissioners if they have questions, I'd like to recognize Alderman Sikyo Lopez from the 25th Ward. And I would like to ask Alderman if he has any comments he'd like to share uh, with um, the commission on behalf of this project? Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, to all the uh, members of the commission, I uh, just want to uh, thank uh, the Department of Housing, uh, Department of Planning, and uh, all uh, the city agencies that have been involved in this, um, uh, in this transaction. Uh, this has been a historic moment, as you know, Pilsen is in a pivotal moment. We've seen the effects of displacement that have uh, they're taking um, a big hit in our community. Uh, over 14,000 residents left the community because of lack of affordable housing options in the last uh, decade or so. Uh, we are thankful for the Department of Housing, Department of Planning, uh, the Law Department uh, for hearing from the community directly the priorities that we have it was clear that we could not reach an agreement with donor due diligence um, with PMG, but it was clear that we could not reach an agreement uh, and luxury housing in the area would have fuel what is already a big fire of displacement in our community. Uh, community groups, uh, all 
all the community groups overwhelmingly support this transaction. We received a letter of support with every single community group. Overwhelmingly, residents want to see um, affordable housing as a priority, bring back neighbor, uh, uh, families to our neighborhood from those 14,000 uh, residents who uh, did not get an opportunity to stay in the neighborhood that they helped build over time. It is a historic moment. So I wanna thank you for taking this into consideration. This is a pivotal moment and it was, we're making history here together by helping um, with this community prerogative, I will call. This is what we community heard. We don't due diligence trying to get a compromise. When that didn't work, I think that we're doing the right thing. Building affordable housing in Pilsen uh, will bring back some of our families and give us a little bit of hope that you know our city uh, can build inclusive neighborhoods, neighborhoods that reflect the social fabric um, of who we are. So I wanna just thank you for making this possible. Uh, overwhelmingly, even for the residents, they said, we don't want the empty lots, but we also don't want more displacement. And this is the right thing to do. This is the right fit for community. And I wanna thank you for making this uh, uh, priority. And I wanna ask you for uh, the favorable support for this item. We're fully behind this. And I look forward to continue to work with Department of Housing planning to build a historic project for our neighborhood. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alderman, for your remarks and for spending time with us this afternoon uh, to express your support. We, it's greatly appreciated. Commissioners, any questions for city staff? I have a question, Chair. Uh, yes, please. Sorry, I was supposed to Please raise my hand. I, I, I think this is a great uh, a great transaction. I do have a question. The alderman mentioned that there were uh, people displaced. Um, I'm curious as to is there any work being done to for those folks that have been displaced? Are we looking to reach out to them to see if they're interested in coming back to the community or to the neighborhood? Uh, what at, at when this is completed, which probably will take some time, but I wonder if there were any thoughts or efforts on that front, just. I can add a little bit if, 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 if possible, um, commissioners. Um, one of the things that we, and again, this is the RFP, will probably go out probably third quarter of 20, you know, 2022. So it's still in the making, but this is something that we wanna do intentionally as a community, right? That an open RFP that allow us to have that. One of the ideas, that is circulating, for instance, is because we need family size units, right? That's been a big shortage in our community. And these are the families having left. There's under enrollment in some of our schools. So uh, connecting, for instance, these units to CPS families, you know, how do we make that po a possibility? How we work um, as a community to prioritize that so that we can help uh, making sure that our schools uh, don't continue to lose enrollment and we give that possibility to our families. That's what I think the RFP is important to know Commissioner Cox and Commissioner Navarra are working very closely with our office to discuss this policy so that we can really make sure that people from our community have an opportunity to apply and have a priority. So this again is an open project for everyone, but we do wanna find a way uh, to help our community have this vibrancy and this mix between families and young professionals that I think is possible. So we will look forward to making maybe some of these um, you know, in our RFP, that's what we're taking our time and I welcome that because we have to be very intentional. This is a great opportunity. And I do think that uh, Commissioner Cox and Commissioner Navarra have been um, uh, very collaboratively on their effort. They even visit the site with us, they toured the site with us a while ago. Uh, so we are in conversations about that. It's still, again, it's really early, but we're certainly committed to do that. Thank you, Alderman. I think the idea of connecting with the schools is great. Thank you. Commissioner. Gomez, any additional questions? Great, thank you so much. Commissioner Curtis? Yes, thank you. Um, just wondering if you can give me just a little history on the land. Uh, when did PMG acquire it and how much did they pay for the land? Uh, I'm not sure uh, when exactly they required it. I know they first proposed a development back in 2015. Uh, as terms of the value, I'm not sure again how much they paid for it, but we, we had an independent appraiser uh, take a value of the property prior to uh, making a deal. And they valued it, this is a Pradium uh, evaluation group, they valued it at $15 million. I'm, uh, I, would, I would guess that the, the value that they paid for it was a big public record, huh? Um, potentially, yes, I, 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 but I don't have that. 
Thank you. Commissioner Curtis, additional questions? No, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Wheat. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, two questions uh, for, uh, actually, let me, uh, two questions. So first, I know that there has been litigation between the city and PMG. Uh, I think particularly with respect to this parcel is the expectation that with this transaction that that, that litigation would be settled or are there other outstanding uh, issues between the city and PMG? Um, my understanding, and I, I, we have our corporation counsel on the line as well, but that this is part of a settlement agreement so that uh, the acquisition would uh, uh, put an end to any pending litigation. Got it. Um, sorry, is, is, was someone else going to chime in? I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the answer. Thank you. Michael, you're, you're going in and out, so if you wouldn't mind getting sure. to your mic. Sure. Uh, is this good now? Better. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, my understanding is that, uh, and I have the corporation counsel, I believe I saw him on the line, but that we, this is part of a settlement agreement. So the acquisition is a settlement agreement. Thus, any future litigation would, be, uh, would, would not occur. Yes, this is Mike, Mike Gaynor, general counsel for Department of Planning and Department of Housing. And yes, the, the goal of the acquisition is to settle the, uh, um, settle the litigation. Thank you. And then a second question uh, to staff. The alderman talked uh, uh, a little bit about the a potential RFP going out at some point in 2022, but would be curious about to the extent there are, there have been plans in terms of community engagement uh, around the site, if uh, the commission can hear more uh, about that, particularly given, I, I assume at some point in the future, this parcel may come back uh, to the commission for additional uh, uh, for additional support. Uh, Commissioner Cox, I saw your, your hand up. I don't know if you have some thoughts there. Certainly, thank you uh, for the question. We've been working uh, very closely, the Department of Housing and, uh, and planning uh, with the Alderman's office to try to set the framework for uh, how this site uh, is envisioned by the community. Uh, as you heard, there's a need for um, housing for families with children, but there's a real attention to trying to create uh, a mix that really represents um, what Pilsen is made of. Um, so uh, the planning department, together with our partners, will be crafting um, a framework vision uh, we anticipate that there'll be multiple uh, sub-development sites. Um, there might be up to six or seven discrete sites with uh, multiple housing types for uh, multiple um, types of households. Um, so we're gonna take the lead in crafting the RFP. And part of the reason why the RFP um, might um, not come out until the, the third quarter is because we'd like to actually craft the RFP content um, with a community-based process. Uh, we we've have some practice with that, with the various RFPs that went out for Invest Southwest, and we'd like to replicate that here so that developers, when they respond, know exactly what the community's expectations are and they can more clearly um, meet, uh, meet those goals. Um, so that's... Um, a little bit how we've been thinking about it. I think the alderman said it, this is um, an unprecedented opportunity um, to, to bring his um, agenda for affordable housing with the mayor's agenda for affordable housing. Rarely do we get a chance to do something of this scale and magnitude in an area that is, uh, as the alderman stated, very quickly gentrifying. Uh, so we're talking about hundreds of units, we're talking about a variety of housing types, and we're talking about uh, giving uh, residents a say how we put this call out, um, if, that, if that helps answer some of your questions. It, it does. That was very helpful, Commissioner. Thanks uh, for the additional detail. Uh, I, I don't have any uh, other questions, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Weed. Are there other questions from the commissioners? I don't see any hands raised. 
So we will call the item now for a vote. The resolution before us requests the CDC's authority to allow the Department of Planning and Development to acquire 28 continuous parcels generally located at 1600 to 1800 South Peoria Street in the Pilsen Industrial Corridor, TIF Redevelopment Project area. Do I have a motion? So move, Commissioner Brooks. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Do I have a second? Second, Commissioner Rhodes. Thank you, Commissioner Rhodes. I will now call the item for a voice vote. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Yes. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Rhodes. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much. For our third item of new business, which is actually the second item of new business that we are handling today so far, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting the authority to sell city-owned property located at 1256 South Kilbourne Avenue and 1318 South Kilbourne Avenue in the Roosevelt Cicero TIF to Industrial Fence Incorporated at a price equal to the property's appraised value. Michael Perella will present the staff report on behalf of the planning department. Mike, you may begin your presentation when ready. Thank you. Um, just a moment while I get this up. And I apologize if the lights are going out. I'm in a room with a motion sensor. And then it's in here. So I'll try, I'll try to wave my arms every now and again. Uh, okay. I believe you should be able to see my screen now. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Chairwoman and members of the commission. For the record, my name is Michael Perella project manager with the Department of Planning and Development. The resolution uh, before you request authorization to enter into a market rate land sale with Industrial Fence, Inc. In the position of right, city I'm gonna ask you to move a little bit closer to your microphone, thank you. Sure. Better now? I'll just speak up. Yes. All right, good afternoon. Uh, uh, for the record, my name is Michael Perella. The resolution before you requests authorization to enter into a market rate land sale with Industrial Fence, Inc. for the disposition of city-owned property at 1256 uh, to 1318 South Kilbourne Avenue. Uh, with here with me today is uh, Mike Salton Gerald, uh, uh, Al Tutje, and uh, uh, from Industrial Fence and their consultant, uh, David Holzberg. Apologize for your all last name. The proposed land sale is located in the North Lawndale neighborhood, Roosevelt Cicero Tiff, in the 25th, sorry, sorry, 24th Ward, Alderman Scott. Uh, here you see the site outlined in blue. It consists of three city owned parcels, um, approximately 128,235 square feet in size. The city has owned this land since 1999. And it sits about uh, 0.75 miles south of the Eisenhower Expressway and immediately abuts a rail line and the western border of the city of Chicago, um, which you see is Cicero to the west. The properties are bordered on the north, to the north, uh, by the headquarters, production facility, and showroom of Industrial Fence. Industrial Fence has been in business since 1999. They are a disadvantaged business enterprise, a uh, veteran-owned business, and an MBE. 
Um, they have several clients uh, across the, uh, the U.S. and many here in Chicago, including ComEd, People's Gas, IDOT, Public Schools, CHA, CTA, City of Chicago, of course, NWRD, Metro, and the airports. Uh, they currently employ 68 full-time workers, and their total sales are $17 million annually. See a little bit of the facility here on the screen on the left. Um, they recently just completed the expansion of that facility uh, up to uh, 200, well, um, now it uh, is in uh, 242,000 square feet large. And they added a retail showroom as well as additional office, office and cleaning space. The city owned land, which you see on the right side of the screen, is actually heavily, heavily contaminated. Uh, it was a former home of a Valspar facility. Uh, environmental uh, testing back in 1999 revealed contamination, um, including underground storage tanks, lead dust, and contaminated backfill, um, asbestos, PCBs. Uh, so uh, the city, uh, which uh, bought the land at, around that time, uh, re uh, remediated the site by adding an engineered barrier, and that was approved by the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, and the site received a no further remediation, remediation letter. Unfortunately, since that time, uh, the property has been uh, neglected and uh, the engineered barriers are cracked and broken and therefore not in compliance with the IEPA standards set by the remedial action plan and those standards set by the uh, no further remediation letter. So uh, the sale overview. Industrial French uh, approached the city looking to secure the city owned land because their current footprint was insufficient to meet their growing needs. Despite their recent expansion, their headquarters still lack secure parking that will allow employees and customers easy access to their facility. In addition, they needed more space for material storage and for a laydown yard, thus freeing up additional production at their facility. The city obtained an appraisal and the property of the property and, and uh, it was appraised for $4.80 per square foot. Uh, and in, uh, in total, the, the land sale will be for 615528 the sale will also facilitate the restoration of the engineered barrier on site. As part of the agreement, industrial fence will restore the conditions necessary to maintain a no further remediation letter on site. In exchange, the city has agreed to place the proceeds of the land sale into an escrow account from which industrial fence can use to draw down upon their costs to restore that engineered barrier. The total amount of environmental remediation costs is not expected to exceed $125,000 and any remaining balance will be due towards the city. Uh, Industrial Fence expects to spend $3 million in total on the project and are not requesting any additional city funding. What they will build is a 43,780 square foot parking lot with a water retention area and paved material storage area. There'll be 85 parking spaces on site, 77 for parking, parking spaces for employees and customers and additional eight parking spaces for commercial vehicles. The site will be landscaped in accordance with the Chicago Landscape Ordinance. Uh, the sidewalk and parkway abutting the site, which are in very poor condition, will be restored and additional parkway trees will be added. It will really um, enhance the look of Kilbourne Avenue, which is you know, a generally industrial corridor in some disrepair. In addition, as part of the agreement, industrial fence will be required to keep and uh, maintain the material storage in good order, uh, free from clutter and, and, uh, and uh, associated um, looks that are, are, are pleasing to the community and otherwise uh, would, would uh, bring down the value of the area. Uh, overall, in, in addition, uh, the, you know, it, retaining the 68 jobs uh, on site, they're expected to add um, eight new full-time jobs that are built of the uh, expanded land with additional plans in the future, provided that their expansion plans continue for maybe 20 to maybe even 30 uh, more industrial jobs as their company grows in the future. And in addition, you know, they've had expressed interest of using this land to expand their production facilities as needed in the future. So this will again provide um, a great opportunity to retain this business and allow them to grow into the future and meet the needs of their customers. Uh, the project will return a vacant city parcel back to the tax rolls and improve the physical appearance of Kilbourne Ave and uh, with new sidewalks and landscaping, uh, retain the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the disadvantaged owned business, the veteran owned business and the MBE. Uh, you know, retain those 68 jobs, create at least eight new jobs and potentially more. And of course, ensure that a contaminated parcel is capped and won't become a hazard to the community. Uh, the project is in conformance with the Roosevelt Cicero TIF redevelopment plan and Alderman Scott has reviewed the proposal and it has his support. As a result, 
of all those factors, the Department of Planning and Development uh, requests and recommends that the uh, Community Development Commission uh, approve the market rate sale of uh, 1256 and 1318 South Kilbourne to Industrial Fence, Inc. Uh, thank you and myself and the, uh, uh, the, the Industrial Fence. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Michael. Before we get to uh, the questions from the commission, uh, I don't know if Alderman Michael Scott may fourth rule ward or anyone from his um, office is available on the call today, but Alderman Scott, if you are on or if someone from your office uh, is on and would like to make comments, uh, now, would, now is the appropriate time. Okay, so we will move to the questions from the members of the commission of the CDC and um, commissioners, uh, both the city staff as well as individuals representing industrial fence are available to answer your questions. Secretary, excuse me, Vice Chair Newsom. Vice Chair Newsom, I see your hand is up and you are now off mute. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. I apologize first to the commission and to staff and our presenters in that I am in the midst of a, an administrative hearing, so I'm dodging back and forth. I have a question with regard to the division of the one pin, and I guess uh, my question centers around the potential use for the portion of the land that is left over after the division. Uh Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm happy to answer that. So what I didn't mention, yes, it is. What I didn't mention in the presentation was that uh, pin 017, uh, which is uh, we're gonna partially convey to the applicant. The pin is actually divided. Um, I'll go back to a map here. Uh, you see 14th street here. The pin is actually divided um, between our unused right of way, the north of 14th street and to mm -hmm. the south of 14th, the 14th street. So uh, industrial fence only requested the area to the north of 14th street. They obtained a survey and we have those dimensions and that is the basis of the, the market rate sale. To the south, uh, this, uh, this industrial facility you see to the south here was recently purchased by uh, another user who is looking to expand their parking uh, uh, and their storage um, uh, for a, a paint uh, supply company. And we are currently in contact with them and they are committed to purchasing the, the property on the south half of pin 017. So they, they will find a use uh, hopefully soon, once we uh, go through the particulars of that land sale. Thank you for that explanation. Vice Chair Newsom, additional questions? No, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I just wanted to assure that once the division was made that we actually were left with a usable uh, a piece of land. And I believe Mike has addressed that in that uh, one of the uh, other owners will be acquiring that piece. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Curtis. Yes, thank you. I'm just curious if Industrial Fence owns their building. Is there a representative from Industrial Fence that would like to respond to Commissioner Curtis's question? Yes, we do. It's Mike Salter General. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions from the commissioners? Okay, uh, given that there are no additional questions, we will now call the item for a vote. The resolution before us requests the CDC's authority to allow the Department of Planning to sell city owned property located at 1256 and 1318 South Kilbourne Avenue in the Roosevelt Cicero Redevelopment Project area to Industrial Fence Incorporated. Do I have a motion? So move, we'll Commissioner sure. Thomas. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Do I have a second? Second, Commissioner Davis. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. I will now call the item for a vote. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Commissioner Buford, are you still on? I'm sorry, yes. Thank you. 
Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Yes. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Rhodes. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion, motion passes unanimously. Thank Chair, you. Chair, Madam Chairman, yes. uh, we, were a, we were able to get Dina back on. So if, we, if you want to go to her while she's <laughs> hopefully- you want, While her. she's connected? <laughs> yes, exactly. So Mike, we're going to give you a break. So you can move around and make sure that your motion detector knows that you're still in the room and still need the lights. So we, uh, commissioners, we will go back to on your agenda, the first item of new business, which is the Department of Housing is requesting authority to negotiate and enter into a TIF redevelopment agreement with developer BJ Wright Preservation LP for the redevelopment of property located at 1354 mm -hmm. South Morgan Street. The subject property is located within the Roosevelt Racing TIF redevelopment project. Now, now it's area. good, right? I'm sorry, if, you. if you're not presenting, you put your phone on mute. Okay. Um, Dina Wayne will present the staff report on behalf of the Department of Housing. Dina, you may begin your presentation when ready. Um, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thanks very much. Sorry for all of this confusion. Um, so I'm here today to talk about the Barbara Jean Wright Apartments and to ask for the CDC to grant um, a recommendation to, to, to recommend a city council improvement, approval of, of TIF funds. So let me tell you about this project. The, uh, it goes by a single address, 1354 South Morgan Street, but we'll talk later how it's really on an 11.5 acre site. It's in the 25th Ward, Alderman Cicho Lopez is the alderman, the Roosevelt Racine TIF, the near west side community area. Uh, the project um, is being developed by Jonathan Rose Companies. They're well known uh, to many people, particularly in the east. They have a Chicago presence, but this is the first project that they are going to be redeveloping in the city. It was The company was founded in New York City in 1989. They've become a leader in developing and managing affordable housing. And as you can see, the, as the PowerPoint says, they've managed over $1.8 billion in real estate. And what they specialize in is exactly what we're um, expecting them to do here. They're going to acquire this property um, and, and allow for long-term preservation of these affordable rents. Some projects that they've uh, recently, well, Archer Courts, they've just acquired. Um, Lake Grove Village is another LIHTC Section 8 and Chicago Low Income Housing Trust Fund project that they have in Chicago. And then there's a HUD project with HUD uh, with enhanced vouchers that they worked on at 2101 South Michigan Avenue. To give you an idea of the site, as I mentioned, it's 11.5 acres. It's bounded on the north by Maxwell Street, 14th place on the south, Morgan Street on the east, and then um, it kind of cuts through here. Uh, there's Blue Island and um, Ogden over in this area. These are two other affordable housing projects that were developed separately, Newberry Park here, Congress, Congressman George Collins apartments here, and then this is this is all the Barbara Jean Wright site. Talk a little bit about the budget for the project. It's going to be mostly funded by by bonds. The city is going to issue up to forty six million dollars in tax exempt bonds, housing bonds. Of course, the four million in TIF that we're here to talk about today, they're going to use some of their capitalized interest as a source. They're required to put in a hundred dollars of uh, general partner equity. The the bonds are going to generate four percent tax credits, and those tax credits in turn are expected to generate twenty two million. Some problem here with a comma. Twenty two million three hundred twenty nine thousand dollars in uh, tax credit equity over a period of ten years. And to also support their project, they're going to defer a portion of their developer fee. 
there is an acquisition cost involved. They're going to buy the project from Jonathan Rose Companies, uh, sorry, from uh, CCDC, who's owned it since the 1990s. What happened to the um, this slide? CCDC bought the property in 1999. Um, it had been built in 1972. Tony Fusco of CCDC is basically retiring and div divesting himself of his various properties. So he would sell it um, basically for the acquisition price. And then Jonathan Rose would put in this uh, other money to, to do a really substantial renovation of the project. The high renovation cost of about $267,700 per unit just shows all that they're going to do. There's going to be both interior work, kitchens and baths, um, flooring, new carpeting, and then exterior building repairs, some deferred maintenance, HVAC work, repairs to a basketball court, um, upgrade the landscaping, and then they're proposing to build about a 4,000 square foot community building. And um, I'll show you slides of that momentarily. Um, in terms of the, the unit mix, uh, all of the units, well, there are going to be a total of 272 units. 251 of them, or 92%, will be affordable for people at 60% AMI or below. There will be a lot of uh, both HUD and CHA um, vouchers in this building. Many of the units will be at 60% AMI, but I will point out the 27 um, HAP-supported units at 50% AMI, and then um, the, there will be some market rate units here that um, are for people who now basically are over income, over that 60% income. In a sense, in, unusually and maybe important for this development, there are no one bedroom units. They are all two, three, and four bedroom units, so larger units, so very good for families, of course. Here's some photos of the existing uh, buildings. And here are some elevations of the community space that they're building that they're referring to as the clubhouse. Um, it will also have offices for Jonathan Rose companies and um, community space for the residents. Just to show you where the clubhouse will be, it'll be sort of contained within the, the site. 14th Street runs through a portion of the site, so it's somewhat north of there. Um, somewhat south of Maxwell Street. And this black box apparently illustrates um, a storage area that they're going to construct on the back of one of the buildings. I should mention, <laughs> so thrown off by the presentation from the delays, but uh, Corintha Walsh and, and maybe Brandon Kirsch, both uh, staff members who have been working with me extensively on this project are here and can answer any questions of things that I may have left out or that are unclear. Here's some floor plans, four bedroom in a six unit building, three bedroom in a six unit building. So one, two, three. Okay, I think the next one, I just wanna look through um, to see other odds and ends that I haven't mentioned. Um, there have been a phase one and a phase two environmental studies done. They did show some subsurface uh, environmental contamination. And so the site, not unusually, will be enrolled in the Illinois State Remediation Program. And they will need to get a, a comprehensive no further remediation letter um, before people can, can come back into the site. There will be people relocated um, as construction uh, goes on, it, you know, as, the, as they do sort of one, um, one building at a time, that kind of thing. Um, let's just see if there's anything else I want to... Oh, I'll mention some of the, the consultants, if you saw that in the report, who are working on the project, because it's a little bit unusual from what we've seen. The architecture firm of Grund and Riestberg was founded in Chicago in 1994. Uh, they've done a lot of large multifamily projects in the city, commercial and institutional and financial uses. They've done just about everything. But in terms of affordable housing, um, they worked with the Lincoln Park Renewal Corporation to renovate 45 housing units um, as part of the Ogden Corners development at 525 West Eugenia Street. 
Um, the general contractor, GMA, so Cornelius Griggs um, or company, and Weiss Construction. Weiss Construction is a group out of uh, Minnesota, and there it's a joint venture there for the for the contractor, general contractor. Jonathan Rose itself, so Rose Community Management will manage the property. The attorneys are well known to us, Applegate Thorne Thompson. Okay, uh, with that, I think I'll conclude my presentation and ask if there are, uh, you know, questions that I can help answer. And again, the recommendation is to recommend approval to the City Council for $4 million in TIF funding for the acquisition and rehabilitation of Barbara Jean Wright Apartments. Now, I believe there may be somebody on from the Alderman's office also to express their support. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. I believe that Alderman Sigjo Lopez himself is on the line. Um, and Alderman, if, if you're still with us, uh, if you'd like to make comments regarding this recommendation. Yes, thank you, Chairwoman, and uh, thank you, Commissioners. Uh, again, and I'm really I'm glad to see these, um, this important uh, project come to fruition. I want to also thank the Rose companies and the CHA at the Department of Planning for working with us. We've seen, I think we all have seen with uh, uh, great concern, the exodus of Black residents from the city of Chicago, precisely because of the lack of um, affordable housing and public housing options. This is a complex side. It was a complex um, uh, transaction. Uh, just given the nature, as you heard, we have a, the current owner who's retiring. Um, we want to maintain the portability of the area, but there's a lot of deferred maintenance. Uh, I think that the, many of the residents have come forward in many um, occasions, public meetings, to ask for support. Uh, I'm glad that the Tenant Association has uh, worked with us to find a good fit for the community. Those companies have gone above and beyond working with CHA or office, uh, HUD, um, and uh, the Department of Planning and the city in general to find a solution. I think we're there and it's taking some time, but also a lot of um, collaborative work to make this happen. And again, ensure that we have families in our community that otherwise will be displaced. Uh, this is again, very close uh, to the other project that we are um, that we discussed earlier. So it's good that we see a more um, affordable and public housing, both for black and brown residents who are having a very difficult time finding um, housing units in our community that they can afford. So I ask you to uh, please support these two views. I think that uh, that's what TIP money and, and public money should be serving. Blighted communities, areas that need investment and affordable housing, public housing is a good use. I tell you, and I can assure you, uh, this being a long process, but we do have, I think, a good team that will take care of our, of our residents. And again, start giving opportunities so our families don't leave our city. So I ask you to please support this, uh, this request. I think that we have a great team that will do justice uh, on a project that has been coming. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alderman. Are there questions from the commissioners? I don't see any hands raised. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, it's Commissioner Wheat. Uh, two Commissioner. quick questions. Yes, please. Um, so uh, first, one of the concerns raised uh, that looked like it was raised by, by community members in the pre-read packet was around safety. And I was wondering if either staff or uh, the development team could speak to any of the funds in terms of enhancements of, of, of lighting or, or any other uh, safety measures on, on site. I'm wondering if maybe one of the um, people from either from Jonathan Rose could respond to that. I know that um, one of the things they were intending to do in terms of safety is just as part of the maintenance, make sure all the doors lock, all the um, you know entrances are, are, are secure, but I don't know specifically about lighting. So Corintha, if you or Brandon are on, would you be able to respond to that? Sure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Corintha Walsh from Jonathan Rose Companies. And we are absolutely listening to residents about their security um, questions and concerns. 
And we have been um, talking to the tenant council. In fact, just this Thursday, we're hosting a resident meeting, a virtual resident meeting to speak about security. Um, so we have an entire plan to, um, first of all, gate the remainder of the site that is not currently gated. Um, and on the 14th street and Morgan street access point, create um, a security gate for vehicles. Um, basically residents with um, either key fob access or um, I guess um, stickers on their cars will be able to access the site. Um, general, you know, UPS or um, deliveries to the property itself will be able to access like FedEx. Um, but we're, we're looking to basically control um, or have a way to document visitor access or unknown visitors coming on site. We're also installing um, pedestrian gates at 14th and Morgan. And, and then also, um, I don't know, well, I'm not controlling the slide, but um, at the corner of Morgan and Maxwell, there would be another pedestrian gate um, off of that parking lot that would allow access onto the site. Um, to the Northwest of the site, there's another parking lot right off of Maxwell Street, which we are, um, we, we are gating as well with electric gates. So we are definitely taking all security questions uh, very seriously. We are installing more cameras and more lighting as well um, so that uh, we can document who's coming in and out of the property. Thank you for that. And then the my, my second question is around the relocation plan. Uh, staff indicated that there will be some relocation that's, that's necessary during construction and you're already pretty um, you're pretty much at, at capacity. Can, can you speak more to, to that? Sure. So currently there are- I'm sorry, could you reintroduce yourself again? Oh, okay, sure. Um, my name is Corintha Walsh uh, from Jonathan Bose Companies. And in response to your question about relocation, we are anticipating temporary relocation. So I just wanna be very clear that we are not instituting any permanent relocation or permanent displacement of the site. Everyone who currently lives at the property will be invited to continue to live at the property once we acquire and uh, go through construction and complete it. Um, but during the construction process, we are anticipating relocating some residents to renovated units on site. Um, I should take a step back and note that there are about 20 vacancies currently on site that will allow us to renovate those units, relocate residents to those vacated units, and then um, basically uh, renovate and relocate residents, you know, over over time. Understood, thank you. That's all the questions I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, point of privilege from the chair for uh, the representative from Jonathan Rose. Uh, what do you anticipate being the length of time that the relocated tenants will be in temporary housing? We are working on our construction schedule right now. We haven't ironed down exactly how long um, a resident may be um, in a temporary unit. Um, I wanna point out that most residents will move from their current unit into a fully renovated unit permanently. Uh, but there are maybe 20 to 30 households that may need to move into a renovated unit. Um, however, they may be asked to move a second time. Okay, and, and is that, can you make a guessment? Is that six months, a year, two years? Um, okay, so yeah. it, it, will, it will definitely be less than a year. Um, and um, hoping that it would, wouldn't be more than a couple months, but I haven't quite confirmed that yet uh, with our construction team. Great, thank you for that clarification. It's appreciated. Are there other questions from the commission? Yes. Um, Grace Chan McGibbon here. Yeah, Grace Chan McGibbon here. I, I have a related question. Um, is the Barbara Jean Wright courts currently, what is the occupancy rate and will there be any um, vacant units available for new residents to move in? 
Sure. So there are approximately. Sorry, could you? I need for you to uh, introduce yourself again. I, I apologize. I'm I'm new to new to this. Uh, my name is Corintha Walsh from Jonathan Rose Companies, and um, in response to your question about vacancy, currently there are approximately 20 vacancies um, on site. So just under 10% vacancy. And can, can you repeat the next part of your question? Yeah. So whether these vacant units will be um, available for new residents or um, not until after the renovation? Sure. Uh, once again, Corintha Walsh from Jonathan Rose Companies, the vacant units will be available after the total renovation is completed. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Chan McKibben. Any additional questions? No additional questions, thank you. Great, thank you. Are there additional questions or further questions from any of the commissioners? Okay, and thank you. Uh, Dean, I'm gonna ask you to put the uh, recommendation page back up on the screen, please. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. <laughs> Before I call for a vote. Again. Oh dear. Since it's on my computer has, oh, there we go. Great, thank you so much. Sure. So we'll now call this item for a vote. Uh, the resolution before us requests the CDC authority allowing the Department of Housing to enter, to negotiate and enter into a redevelopment agreement with developer BJ Wright Preservation LP for the redevelopment of property located at 1354 South Morgan Street in the Roosevelt Racine TIF redevelopment project area. In addition, um, we're requesting the CDC approval to recommend approval to the city council for $4 million in TIF funding for the acquisition and rehabilitation of Barbara Jean Wright Apartments. Do I have a motion? So I'll moved move by Commissioner Cox. Thank you, Commissioner Cox. Do I have a second? Second by Commissioner Chan McKibben. Thank you, Commissioner Chan McKibben. Under the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. Vice Chair Newsom. Uh, yes. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Uh, Daniel. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Yes. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Thomas. Commissioner Trevino. Commissioner, Commissioner Thomas, Thomas, yes. Thank you. Commissioner Trevino. And before I vote, I should uh, make the commissioner aware that uh, Commissioner Rhodes is abstaining from voting on this matter. Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes unanimously with one abstention. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are now moving to what on the agenda is item D, which is our fourth item of new business. The Department of Planning and Development is requesting the authority to acquire the property at 38 11 to 3841 West Madison Street in the Madison Austin Corridor TIF. Michael Perella will again present the staff report on behalf of the planning department. Michael, you may begin your presentation. Thank you, Chairwoman. Should see the screen? Yes. Wonderful. All right. Uh, Good afternoon again. Uh, for the record, uh, my name is Michael Perella, project manager with the Department of Planning and Development. The resolution before you requests authorization for the city to acquire acquisition authority for the properties at 3811 to 3841 West Madison Street from the current owner, uh, Aldi Inc. of Aldi grocery stores. 
Um, the proposed land acquisition is located in the West Garfield Park community area in the Madison Austin TIF redevelopment project area. It's in the 28th Ward, uh, led by Alderman Irvin. The site consists of, uh, here's the location of the site here, uh, just west of Garfield Park, excuse me. Uh, the site consists of three pins comprising roughly one acre of land, uh, just west of Garfield Park, as like I said, and Hamlin Boulevard. Uh, it is located in the Madison Street Commercial Corridor, which is the largest and most vibrant stretch of Chicago's uh, uh, commercial corridor on the west side. Up until mid-October, the site was home to an Aldi grocery store, which operated at, at that location for 30 years, or over 30 years, I should say. Here is the Aldi now. Uh, around October 15th, uh, it ab Aldi abruptly closed its West Garfield Park location. The closure left a large vacant store in the center of the Madison Street Commercial Corridor. The Commercial Corridor has been struggling as of late with rising vacancies, deteriorating buildings, and some crime sparked by the social unrest of 2020. Despite that, the corridor is still a viable and vital commercial street, and several nationally recognized brands are still located on the corridor, including Foot Locker, Family Dollar, and Walgreens. The closure also left West Garfield Park with the West Garfield Park neighborhood seriously deficient in grocery stores and supermarkets where fresh food, fruits, and vegetables can be obtained by local residents. Shown here on the map in green are the supermarkets uh, within the greater area, with West Garfield Park, East Garfield Park, and Austin neighborhoods. Uh, as you can see, there are no mainstream grocery stores located within a reasonable walk distance to the heart of West Garfield Park and to the site. Um, that serves over 15,000 residents living in the community. Uh, they have one small grocery store, the Save a Lot Foods at Pulaski and the Eisenhower, but otherwise there, there's no real good options. In addition, I would say that the East Garfield Park, West Garfield Park, and Austin neighborhoods are only served by maybe four full-service grocery stores, and they're all located on the fringes of the neighborhood, and that neighborhood houses over 115,000 people. Uh, so seriously, uh, so you know, the lack of access to uh, available fresh food and groceries as one of the several determinant factors leading to poor health outcomes on, of residents with Chicago's uh, west side. Um, since the closure of the Aldi, uh, the community and Alderman Urban have been rallying supporters to bring a grocery store back to the site. Through just direct discussion with Aldi, DPD, DPD learned that they're not planning to reopen the store at this time and are currently marking the property for sale for $700,000. Given the demand for a new grocery at the site and the community's need for grocery store options, DPD's first priority is to be proactive and do what it can to bring a grocery store back to this location. DPD, Aldi, and their broker, CBRE, have discussed on several occasions now uh, the city's desire to bring a grocery store back to the site and is actively referring potential grocers to Aldi and their broker. DPD is, I should say, actively referring potential grocers to the site. What DPD desire, desires here today is to obtain acquisition authority to actively facilitate the retenanting for a new neighborhood grocery store or a similar use uh, that the community can support. But again, the first priority is of course that grocer. EPD also wants to ensure that it can act quickly should an opportunity to purchase a site present itself. By controlling this, uh, by having site or acquisition authority, uh, DPD can work with neighborhood residents to find a community supported end user. Uh, and if the site is purchased, DPD could also explore potentially RFPing the site to bring a grocery store and developer to the property who can redevelop it in something uh, mixed use, perhaps. Um, but to be clear, DPD is not considering buying the site at this time. Rather, we want to ensure that we remain an active in the retenanting effort and acquiring acquisition authority will provide DPD with all our tools necessary to ensure that it is in a position to influence the end user for the Aldi site. Um, as part of acquisition authority, the Aldi Corporation, Inc., Aldi Inc., was notified of our intention to acquire the acquisition authority, and they have no objections to us doing so. Uh, as previously stated, DPD is working with them to bring a grocer back to the site and, we'll, and uh, a grocer that will return a grocer to the West Garfield Park community. Uh, Alderman Irvin is in full support of this, and we briefed him on, briefed him on several occasions. Uh, therefore, we request that the CDC recommend approval of acquisition authority for 3811 to 3841 West Madison Street. Uh, I appreciate your time and uh, happy to answer whatever questions you may have. Thank you.
Thank you, Michael. Uh, before we open it up to the commission for, uh, to the commissioners for questions, I'd like to recognize Alderman Jason Irvin from the 28th Ward and um, Alderman Irvin, thank you for joining us. Uh, do you have any comments you'd like to share with the commission? Thank you, uh, members of the commission. Uh, I apologize, I'm getting my uh, screen up here. Uh, thank you, members of the commission. Uh, this uh, acquisition is, is very key. This was the former site of Aldi um, that left us uh, not too long ago. We think this is a very key acquisition along this corridor and, and with uh, the community has been hyper-focused on uh, getting a new uh, neighborhood grocery store at this particular location. I definitely support this action uh, that the Department of Planning is making to acquire this property so that the community can stay in control of what happens here at this location. Um, again, our community is uh, meeting, uh, as a matter of fact, have a meeting uh, later this week uh, to talk about how we will retenant this space and, and bring a quality uh, neighborhood grocer to the community. So we definitely would appreciate uh, the support of the CDC in this effort. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alderman Irving. So uh, Commissioner, any questions for city staff? So I don't see any questions from the commissioners. So I will now ask the commission to consider the resolution before us and to call the matter for a vote. The resolution before us requests the CDC's authority for the Department of Planning to acquire property located at 3811 to 3841 West Madison Street in the Madison Austin Quarter TIF redevelopment area. The acquisition would be from Aldi Incorporated. Do I have a motion? So moved, Commissioner Wheat. Second, Commissioner Thomas. Thank you, Commissioner Wheaton, Commissioner Thomas. Under the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. I will now call the item for a vote. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Yes. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Commissioner Gomez, are you still with us? Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Rhodes. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino and Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, uh, members of the commission. Thank you, Alderman Irvin. For our final item of new business, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to enter into a sale agreement with 19, excuse me, 914 South California LLC for the disposition of city owned property at 912 South California Avenue in the Midwest TIF redevelopment project area. Michael Perella will again present the staff report on behalf of the planning department. Michael, you may begin your presentation. Thank you. Um, I have the presentation up. Um, good afternoon, chairman, or chairwoman, I should say, and members of the commission. Uh, for the record, my name is Michael Perella, project manager with the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, as you heard, the resolution before you requests authorization to enter into a market rate land sale with 914 South California LLC for the disposition of city owned properties at 912 South California Avenue. Here with me today is Jordan Murch, or Murch, excuse me, of 914 South California LLC. The proposed land sale is in the East Garfield Park neighborhood, Midwest TIF, and the 28th Ward Alderman Urban. Um, here you see the site outlined in blue. It consists of a single city-owned lot that is 3,000 square feet in size. 
Uh, this lot has been in the possession of the city since 1978. Uh, the neighborhood in which it sits has seen some serious uh, disinvestment over those over that time since we acquired the lot. Uh, the population has dropped from a peak of 70,000, now it's down to 21,000. This is evident in the, the numerous vacant lots, both city owned and privately owned, that make up a large portion of the land uses in the area of, the, of this, um, or in this area, I should say. And uh, also evident in uh, the California Avenue, uh, which uh, previously served as a you know, uh, vital commercial corridor and is now uh, pockmarked with uh, vacancies and, and um, empty storefronts. But despite these challenges, uh, the neighborhood is centrally located relative to many urban amenities. Uh, and to the Chicago's Loop. It sits just a quarter mile from Douglas Park and a half mile south of the Eisenhower Expressway. Uh, across the street is the uh, Brinks Document um, uh, Center, Security Center. Two blocks to the east is the future home of the Chicago Hope Academy uh, High School and um, redevelopment there. You can see where that, that blue track is. And uh, several blocks south is Cinespace. So um, the, the neighborhood, of course, has potential and, and one. Um, that also needs you know, reinvestment. As stated, the city owned lot in question is a single 24 by 125 foot lot set between two uh, existing warehouse buildings. The building to the north in the white one is owned by the applicant, as is the building to the south. The south building at 914 South California was recently purchased by the applicant who is renovating the space. Uh, the applicant, uh, as I said, Jordan uh, Merch of 914 South California LLC is a local entrepreneur and business owner who has built, renovated, and maintained several properties in Chicago and the greater Midwest. He also maintains several businesses, including an ATM installation business and a commercial laundry repair and service business. The applicant approached the city with an offer to purchase the vacant parcel in the middle of his two properties uh, for market rate so he could link his properties together and create a contiguous site. The city appraised the property for $25,000 and the applicant agreed to pay a uh, market rate for that. In addition, the applicant uh, obtained a phase two environmental assessment for the property, which revealed uh, contamination on site. And the city will require him to enroll the site in Illinois site remediation program, contain a commercial industrial no further, no further remediation letter. Uh, the applicant agreed to fund this cleanup and to assist, the city is uh, escrowing the $25,000 sale price at closing. The applicant can use those funds to clean up the site. Uh, while the estimated cost of cleanup has not been determined yet, um, it is pending a remedial action plan, which will be a requirement of closing. Uh, it is expected that the full $25,000 has the potential to be used given the high cost of uh, SRP enrollment fees and um, some of the soil, remo soil removal that must take place on the site. That being said, if any funds remain in the balance, uh, the city will acquire them. And should remediation costs go over, uh, the developer will uh, be responsible for paying those costs. And a proof of financing and his ability to pay, again, is a product of uh, uh, closing conditions. Um, the proposed project will consist of a two-story, uh, 28, approximately 28,000 square foot office and warehouse space. The building will be 20 feet high and consists of a brick facade and, and the front and the garage entries for trucks in the rear. The building will serve as an office and warehouse storage space for the commercial laundry and sales business as also being uh, uh, used in the building to the south at 914 South California, um, which, as I said, the developer is currently renovating. Um, this will expand the amount of space available for businesses and activate some buildings along the California Avenue corridor. And the project is expected to cost $300,000, uh, of which the developer will be paying uh, the entire amount with no additional assistance from the city. Uh, the expected uh, jobs generated here are, are about 20. Um, as I said, the project will return a vacant city lot uh, back to the tax rolls, or remediate an environmentally contaminated land, add up 20 new jobs, uh, and uh, begin to rebuild the physical condition of the California Avenue and the East Garfield Park neighborhood. And of course, uh, relieve the city of a lot it's owned for over 30 or over 40 years. Uh, the project is in conformance with the Midwest TIF redevelopment plan and Alderman Urban has uh, reviewed it and supports it as well. As a result, uh, the Department of Planning and Development recommends that the Community Development Commission recommend approval of a market rate land sale with the environmental escrow to nine, of 912 South California to 914 South California LLC. Thank you for your time.
Great, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, is Alderman Irving Irvin still on the call? Still on the meeting? I don't see him listed. Is there someone from the Alderman's office who's here with us that would like to speak to this recommendation? Okay, I will ask the commissioners, are, are there any questions? I don't see any hands raised from the commissioners. I'd like to also mention that uh, Jordan Murch is here to represent 914 South California LLC and to answer your questions to the extent the commissioners have any. You can speak with the uh, proposed acquirer directly. Okay, given that there are no questions of either the city staff or the acquirer, I will now call, call the item for a vote. The resolution before us requests the CDC's authority for the Department of Planning and Development to sell city owned property located at 912 South California Avenue in the Midwest TIF redevelopment project area to 914 South California LLC. Once again, the Open Meetings Act requires that we have a voice vote. Do I have a motion? So move. Thank you, Thomas. Mr. Thomas. Do I have a second? Second, Commissioner Brooks. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. I will now call the vote. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Curtis. Yes. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Gomez. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Rhodes. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes unanimously. I would now like to request a motion to adjourn. Do I have a motion? So move, Madam Chair. <laughs> Uh, Vice Chair Newsom says enthusiastically. Uh, do I have a second? second? Second, Curtis. All right, great. I, I don't think anyone will be opposed to us adjourning the meeting. I'd just like to wish everyone a very safe and peaceful holiday season. Mm -hmm. And we'll see, see everyone in the new year. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Bye. Same to everybody else. Okay, oh. bye. Yep.